I'm Candace, and with me is Arzu. Hey, Arzu. Hello. And we are at the height of our mermaid era, right? Yes, we are. I'm actually wearing a swimsuit under this. I'm going swimming after. See? That's exactly. how much my mermaid era I'm in. I had sushi a few days ago, so. No. You're in your sea witch era. I know. Okay. On that note, we have both seen The Little Mermaid live action 2023. Arzu mm-hmm. has seen it twice. And you should know, as of recording, it came out two days ago. Yes. So here we are. And we both are thinking this is the best of the live action remake so far. Right, Arzu? Yeah, I would say so. I, li- I like the uh, some of the other ones. Yes. But I think, yeah, this is the best in terms of capturing, like, the heart and the thesis of the original. Yes. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about why this works versus maybe some of the other ones. And I think the uh, biggest thing is, like you said, it stays true to the original, enhances it as well. I feel like these are Ariel and Eric. Everything that happens to Ariel and Eric in this movie could happen to those animated characters and it wouldn't not make sense. Yes. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, because I love Beauty and the Beast, both versions, but they made Belle an inventor, unlike her father, which I feel like they were just trying to make her more of a girl boss or something. See, I don't mind the inventor side of things because I'm like, okay, that's a natural extension of curiosity. She's reading about it, so she wants to try it. That's fine. But it was other things that I'm like, I think the Beauty and the Beast, the cartoon, is at its core about being an outcast and outcasts finding each other. It was about not retreating or lashing out when you are alone, but like finding that kind of commonality with somebody else. No one's ever alone, stuff like that. And then this one became more, we have a problem to solve. Yes. There's a big change in Beauty and the Beast, which is Belle knows about the curse, right? I assume she put it together in the cartoon because she's not stupid and there's a talking teapot. But they never illustrate it to her as, we are cursed. And she's, I will help you in spite of the beast. Yes. You know what I mean? So in The Little Mermaid, the opposite happens. And the opposite is that Ariel doesn't know that she's on a time crunch. She, no, she doesn't know what her objective is. She knows she has three She doesn't names. know that she's supposed to kiss him. That's the part that she forgets. But does she know that she only has three days? Yes, because that's why she's so upset. Because she's out of time. But she doesn't know what she's out of time for. She just knows she's out of time. Okay, that was a little confusing to me. I'm like, that's what that was my impression. Was the only thing Ursula said she wasn't going to remember was that she has to kiss him. And any time that Sebastian brought up the kiss, she blinked out. Yeah, she like glazed up, which I think was interesting because that's the same thing Ursula does as Vanessa. She doesn't completely hypnotize Eric. She just makes it like he can't remember why he's getting engaged to her. Yeah, he's very much dazed. Like, it's not like he doesn't know who Ariel is like he does in the cartoon. Like, he does know and he does know that he likes her, but he's unclear in his own mind why he's going through with this again. Yeah. That's just really cool. It's like this parallel because she's using the same trick on both of them. Yeah. Another thing that was great about this movie, I'm like, I'm calling out a lot of movies today. All right. Lion King was a shot for shot remake, which Arzu does not want to talk about. I, If I wanted to watch The Lion King, I would watch the 1994 Lion King. Yes. And I feel like this movie gives us more. Like we get three extra songs, an extra reprise of Part of Your World. And yes, we got extra songs in Beauty and the Beast, but it was like one was just for the furniture. Which they also (laughs) have in the cartoon. Yes, but added human again later. They made it, cut it, and then put it back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They added the Beast song. Evermore. uh, Evermore. Which is a great song, and I will hear no slander against Evermore. Oh, no. It is an amazing song. And Dan Stevens and also the Joss Gobins version. Wow. Wow. Wonderful. But I don't think that really enhances our heroine as much. No, because she has her song. Like, that's what all of these live action movies do is in the cartoon, one of them gets a song. In the live action, both of them get a song. Yeah. But Ariel have... gets more than one song in this movie. Ariel gets more than one song. But, like, 
like a song to express her feelings, she gets one. She gets part of your world. Yeah, she gets an I want song. And yeah. Eric gets an I want song too. Wild Uncharted Waters, which is a, fine. It's okay. It's okay. It's not the best. No. But it's better in the movie than on the soundtrack. Yeah. The I, still, I still prefer her voice from the Broadway show, which is my preference. I feel like the extra song for Ariel when she is human just, again, enhances her character oh. more. Here's my controversial take on the songs. Scuttlebutt is not a bad song. A lot of people, I'm like, it's very Lin-Manuel Miranda, which take or leave however you feel about Lin-Manuel Miranda's stuff. It's not like a bad song. It's just a silly song. Oh my god, I lost it at the Sebastian part. Yeah, but the little Yeah. My entire theater lost their mind. It was fun. That's the thing it's is fine. when you go to when you go to these movies, it's about fun. And that's the thing is with mostly all these remakes, I've had fun watching them. Except The Lion King. I didn't have fun. Oh no, the Lion King was awful. I had fun with the company because it was my best friend, but I did not have fun with the actual movie. Oh, I took my parents to see it because they took me to see the original. Afterwards, I'm like, I'm so sorry. The popcorn was good. Yeah, that's when you're in trouble when the popcorn was the best part. Anyway. Oh, we're just trashing the Lion King. Anyway, it deserves it. There is a great little cameo from Jodie Benson, the original voice of Ariel. And I think that just like helps be like, yeah, okay. Here's the OG Little Mermaid with the new Little Mermaid. I love her adorable. face in the scene because in the scene she hands Ariel a fork to eat something and Ariel just starts winding her hair in it and she just has this WTF look on her face that I thought was so funny. I'm like, we obviously know. But, but like, yeah, it was a fun nod for especially like us, the kids who like grew up with the original, who know who Jodie Benson is. I was going to say it's the kids who grew up who know who she is because. Not everybody did. I was excited, but most people in the theater didn't react to it. I met her before at one of the cons. She was oh. so sweet. Is there anything else specifically about this movie that you think worked like really All well? Sometimes with live action movies, when they add stuff to it, you feel the addition to the runtime. This is almost an hour longer. It's like 50 minutes longer. It's like they extended existing things rather than adding new things. So it yes. didn't feel longer. I just objectively know it's longer. And yeah, I didn't realize it was that much longer than the original. I didn't feel it at all no, watching no. it. Because the original it's is an hour and 23 minutes, and this is two hours and 16 minutes or something. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah. But it flowed really well. Pun intended. Yes. Yeah, slowing. for flowing. Flowing really well. Flowing. Hallie Bailey is just the perfect aerial. Her voice is so gorgeous. And that girl can no, sing. No offense to, I'm not going to name names, but some other people who have been cast in remakes in the past who cannot sing as well. I think it helps that she is a singer. She's a st- actor singer, but yeah, it's like specifically a singer. Especially when it's Ariel. Who can carry a tune. Yeah. Especially when it's Ariel, who is a gnome specifically for her voice. Exactly. Like, everybody yep. else can carry a tune, but she can sing. Yep. Not everybody else in, like, other movies. Divi Diggs is spectacular. It just reminds me why theater actors are so good at voice roles, because mm-hmm. especially for children. He, like, can... yeah. The CGI crab was cute, at, especially at He was point. so cute. Yeah. Like, when I saw the poster, I was like, no. But no. I think part of it is voice and part of it is, like, movement. Because Flounder looked horrifying on the poster, but it was very cute in the movie. Yes, he was. Yeah, like, the poster looked like something at the grocery store when you're buying, like, fish to take home and cook. But the poster, like, like yeah, no, I know what you mean. Dead fish. But in the movie, he was super cute. Yeah, I think that was the major thing is everybody was so well casted. Nearly everyone. I'm not going to go into my... No, we're not going to go into that. No, because we got into this yesterday. We're not getting into it now. That's okay. This is nice things that worked. Nice. The question is now, what are our top three live action Disney remakes? The Little Mermaid? Yes. Aladdin. And 
I'm going to give the edge to Beauty and the Beast. It was a toss up between that and Cinderella. I'm going to give the edge to Beauty and the Beast, even though I just sat here and dragged it a little bit. I still do like the overall package. <laughs> For me, it is Little Mermaid, Cinderella, and Cruella. I haven't seen Cruella. You haven't? I've seen like five minutes of it. I just haven't seen the whole thing yet. You wrote a whole thing about it. why Cruella should still be. That was before the movie out. came out. I, I was like, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. Now I'm going to watch it. I think I should watch it now. And I just never did. Okay. That's I'm like, wait, things. you even did a bit. We even have a I video did a whole video on it and I still haven't seen it. I'm a professional. Okay. On that note, like, subscribe, all the YouTube things below. Well, comment below with what your favorite live action Disney remake is. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming.